Welcome back to the Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Bull, where we always have fun. Today we're talking about the office market. My guests are Randy Holmes and Bob Voiles. Of course, Bob is here. They're both with Seven Oaks. And we're talking about the office market. And guys, before the break, we were talking about tenant demand and things like that. One of the things that we see happening uh, as we're repping tenants is tenants are wanting to put more people into less space. Uh, then we're also seeing some companies kick back on that a little bit as they're trying to recruit and retain. What are you guys seeing on the ground level of talking to these tenants every day? Are they still trying to put more people in less space? I'd say that um, something that we're seeing around the country is is a strong pressure on occupancy costs. And so as rental rates go up, um, we're also seeing and new construction costs are going up. If you're going to move into a new building, um, the way that the, the tenant solves that problem is by compressing the office space per employee. And the workstation environment gets tighter. Um, you, you still have uh, game rooms or gathering places, collection places, but um, the actual workspace environment is getting much tighter. Um, in some of the suburban markets where we work, uh, conventional buildings that were built 20 years ago that have three per thousand parking, now um, the pressure, the tenant reps want five per thousand parking. So you run that through your model, that's one space per two or 200 square feet per employee. Wow. So that's going to create some uh, havoc, I guess, for some of these buildings that just don't have the parking and, and sometimes maybe not the, the equipment of the HVAC to handle like more people in smaller spaces, right? That's exactly right. And mm -hmm. so it really favors, mm -hmm. you know, newer buildings or buildings located to mass transit. Mm -hmm. And so because the costs uh, for those existing buildings to add parking or change their systems, it, it's prohibitive. Right. Now let's talk about some other tenant situations. What type of lease packages are you seeing today? I know we're a little bit more of a uh, maybe a landlord's market or some equilibrium right in the market. It's no longer a uh, tenant's, tenant's show. What are you seeing for packages on some of your properties? Well, again, you know, every market's different, but yeah. just sort of generally, uh, you're right. Things have mm -hmm. trended more towards the landlord. And, you know, in a healthy market, some rules of thumb of, you know, $5 of TI per each year of lease term or a month mm -hmm. of free rent per each year of lease term, mm -hmm. you know, we're actually starting to do better than that uh, mm -hmm. in some markets, which is great. Um, better on the landlord side. Better on the, yes, excuse me, <laughs> better on the landlord <laughs> <Or> side. <laughs> 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 Landlords are back. And so believe me, uh, seven years ago, those packages were a lot different. So. You know, we are seeing some improvement on that, and, and certainly in some of our southeastern markets, you're definitely seeing rents well north of 30 bucks a foot now, yeah, which yeah. Uh, is great. As you're saying, landlords are back. I thought you were going to do the Snoopy dance there for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what's some tough times that uh, landlords went through Absolutely. in the office market? Well, what about uh, lease clauses? You know, what are tenants seemingly very concerned about today as they're expanding in lease and space? Well, I think it goes back to what we were just talking about, mm -hmm. their ability to add density in terms of their population. Mm -hmm. And so we spend a lot of time talking about parking mm -hmm. uh, and landlords can get creative with sort of some, you know, overselling parking and trying to play the float game uh, with that. And so you spend a lot of time talking about parking. You also talk a lot about TI packages, you know, even though the economy has picked up and a lot more of our tenants are in better uh, cash flow position, no one wants to come out of pocket for um, their, to build out their space. And so they're looking for a lot more flexibility um, in how TI dollars can be used. Nope. And, and uh, another factor is co-tenancy co issues because um, whereas in the downturn, landlords might have brought in a, you know, a private uh, for-profit university tenant or someone, a dense call center into a conventional office building, now you have um, more conventional financial service tenants and other folks who don't want to be next to what we call the tank top and flip-flop crowd. <laughs> so, um, you know, so they were right that into their leases. We're seeing that in a new project that we're getting underway. Right. What about tenant build-out uh, with TI dollars and the type of build-outs you see? I know we just kind of walked through our space here and, you know, we have the game room with a pool table <laughs> and dartboard where we price our listings, right? <laughs> uh, kind of the coffee shop type of, of setup. Uh, are you seeing uh, more of that type of build-out in your buildings? 
We really are. And it always scares you a little bit because it reminds me back of the dot-com <laughs> era. And it was, We're all it just was, playing. Our, our rule of thumb was, you know, foosball table, they're going out of business, right? So, so I'm glad you had a ping-pong table, Michael. Yeah, but the, yeah. uh, definitely a lot more communal space, yeah. uh, a lot more open. It seems like today's workers and certainly the millennial crowd wants to have a, 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 a communal kind of fun space. And they just work differently than people have. And, in, in, you know, sitting in a private office doesn't really appeal to a lot of, a lot of people anymore. Yeah, we're doing an urban project here um, uh, where Gensler, who we chose to do the base building and also doing the interiors for us, their recommendation is to basically turn the building lobby into a coffee shop kind of open space area for oriented towards tech, technology oriented uh, type firms. And um, it's a very different, we call it not your father's office building. <laughs> I mean, or not, not even your grandfather's. So yeah. it, uh, uh, it is, you know, we're changing the way we think about tenants in the, that workspace. Well, I like that. So then I could just hang out in the lobby all day and never go upstairs to see my boss, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, I'm down here, sir. I'm, I'm doing a good job. I'm shaking that bush, boss. <laughs> well, hey, but you are the boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, stay tuned. We'll have more on the office market. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty Commercial Advisors, a great place to do business. Visit bullrealty.com. Realnex, a comprehensive and powerful suite of commercial real estate tools at an incredibly low price. Visit realnex.com. That's R-E-A-L-N-E-X. Excelligent, the resource professionals use for commercial real estate information. Visit Excelligent.com. That's X C E L I G E N T. Commercial Search, the source to market and source available properties for sale or lease. Visit CommercialSearch.com. For more information on these great companies or for additional videos, podcasts, or articles, visit CREshow.com.